Hello and welcome to another lesson on blockchain and in the previous video when I was talking about centralized, decentralized and distributed systems I mentioned that blockchain is a decentralized and a distributed system but there are elements that aren't, aren't that, there are elements that are centralized, heavily centralized and I will give a example, a few examples in a moment and what do I mean by that? Blockchain in itself is definitely truly distributed and decentralized. So at its core, it is. But there are there are applications. So let's talk about the case of Bitcoin because that is the most popular application. So let's talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin that also in itself is decentralized and distributed but with bitcoin there is something called exchanges and exchanges just i'll be covering this in a separate video in more depth but essentially exchanges allow the facilitation of transfers and transactions to take place a lot easier from the user's perspective. It's just a, a friendlier interface. It's just a lot easier to do it that way. If you think of an exchange, almost like a bank, essentially, they help facilitate that. They're essentially an intermediary. And it is the intermediary that is centralized. And as a lot of blockchain applications, one of the biggest being Bitcoin, uses intermediaries that are centralized, there comes the problem that you naturally get with centralized systems in that they have their own policies, just as systems like PayPal and banks do and MasterCard and Visa do. If something goes wrong with them, there's a good chance that they could essentially lose your, so I'm going to talk in the case of currency, so Bitcoin, for example, they could lose your currency, and that has happened. And there's a great example, and that is Mount Gox. In 2014, they were suspended, so in 2014, they were suspended because they lost no no not 700 it was 850 thousand bitcoins at the time that was worth roughly i think 400 or so million dollars so at the time they lost 400 million dollars worth of Bitcoin. If you look at today's market value, which is just shy of five thousand dollars, that same eight hundred and fifty thousand bitcoins would be worth over four billion dollars. So over four billion dollars worth of bitcoins were lost from Mt. Gox, which is an exchange. Mt. Gox at its height was handling over 70% of the Bitcoins on the market. It definitely had a monopoly and it lost all of it. There were a mixture of reasons why the coins got lost. Fortunately, over 200,000 have been retrieved, but there, have been, there are many reasons why the coins lo were lost. There were, there were theft. The obvious one, theft occurred and the Bitcoins were lost. So people within the company were taking coins and I think they had been doing that since 2011. So since 2011, so three years, they had been stealing. And I'm going to say money just to bring it home to you, what exactly they were doing. And, and there were a bunch of other reasons that I think there was hacks involved and there were so many other factors that occurred to them losing it. 
And I think the most important thing to take away is they were centralized. And we had this amazing system called blockchain, which facilitated transactions. They could be transactions of money, of wills, of educational achievements. And on top of that, Bitcoin was built and various other platforms as well. Bitcoin being the biggest one. And again, that was an amazing platform that was decentralized, distributed, and it was essentially a money-based platform in what it has been used for. But on top of that, to aid the ease of use, we had exchanges. I'm not going to say Mount Gox here because just exchanges in general. And these exchanges aren't centralized. I'm positive in the future we'll get some form of decentralized and distributed exchanges. It is early days in blockchain and Bitcoin as well and many other applications of blockchain. But there were there are several exchanges. There obviously there was Mount Gox. There's blockchain.info. And that allows Ethereum transactions on top of Bitcoin as well. There's Coinbase, which at the moment is one of the most widely spread ones. There's CEX.io, which is fantastic. There is Genesis. Genesis is mainly for bigger transactions. Like a lot of these will own at for like a small beginning account will only allow transactions of like a few hundred dollars. Genesis, I believe, uh, only allows transactions above 25 or so thousand dollars. So that's more for corporations or overall just rich people that are looking to transfer large amounts. But all of these are centralized. Coinbase, which I said is one of the most popular ones, has if you look at the terms and conditions and their privacy policy, there are similarities to PayPal. And that's definitely, definitely not centralized. I mean, that's definitely not decentralized and distributed. That's centralized. So that is what I meant by blockchain having elements of decentralized and distributed. I mean, having yeah having centralized features within blockchain we, it's more in the implementations so i hope that helped clear that up and thanks for watching if you have any questions feel free to reach out and i look forward to seeing you in my next video